before we get into this video, if you love this movie and you are looking to actually watch the full thing, go rent it or buy it. This is not a free version of watching the movie. This is a commentary on the movie. I will be talking. If talking during a movie bothers you, get the fuck out. Hey guys, today I'm going to be watching a highly requested movie and that movie is Love, Rosie. Not only is this a highly requested movie, it's also one of my favorite movies ever. Definitely my favorite romantic comedy I've ever watched. I can't remember when I watched it, but I remember I watched it when I thought I was too young to be watching it. So the first time I watched it, I was like, I gotta keep this a secret that I'm watching it because it's a little scandalous. They have sex. This was also a movie that I bought on iTunes, which if I buy a movie on iTunes, like you know I freaking love it because who buys their movies on iTunes? Like who does that? This movie stars Lily Collins and Sam Claflin. Claflin? Claflin. Clayfin. They did a wonderful job in this movie. Their chemistry was unmatched. I love Lily Collins. I think she's amazing. I will say both of these actors were snubbed in their young adult sci-fi movies that they were in. I think they deserve better in both of them. Lily Collins, you were a wonderful Clary, but the movie didn't do you justice. Sam Coffin, you're a wonderful Finnick, and I'm so sad that you died. Today's video is sponsored by Function of Beauty. Not a lot of people take into consideration the importance of their hair care and how much it means to know what types of products you are putting into your hair. And Function of Beauty lets you customize your own shampoo and conditioner with a quiz. In this quiz, you get to pick out five different hair goal types and you get to tell what type of hair you have, whether it's thick, whether it's thin, whether it's oily, whether it's dry, straight, curly, all of the above. And then you can pick out five different hair goals you want. So whether you want to replenish your hair, you want to fix split ends, you want to moisturize or volumize. After you pick out those five hair goals, you can then pick out the scent and the color. These are mine, they're pink. It also says function of trend on the bottle because you get to put your name on it. For my five hair goals, I chose deep condition, fix split ends, lengthen, volumize, and shine. The scent I chose was the peach and mandarin one and it smells super good. I also got it in the strongest scent, but you can customize whether you want it to be mild or you have no fragrance at all. All you have to do to have a customized shampoo and conditioner is fill out an easy two minute quiz. I love that you can pick the color because I, truly do love pink. I think I got yellow in my last bottle and I love that one as well. I just think there's so, there's something so satisfying of seeing colored conditioner. Am I wrong or am I right? Cause I feel like when you see like some type of lotion that's colored, it looks so like I want to eat it, but I think it just looks very aesthetically pleasing. Like this is aesthetically pleasing to you, right? It also comes with pumps if you prefer pumps with your shampoo and conditioner as well. Function of Beauty is also vegan and cruelty free. So there's no parabens, sulfates, GMOs, or any toxins within the shampoo that you're putting on your head. Because think about it, you're putting this like on your skin basically. I mean, you are. So definitely take into account what you're putting on to your body, skincare, hair care, because it's important. So I definitely think looking into what you are putting onto your hair is very, very important. I love Function of Beauty because I can definitely see a difference within the formulas that I make because I've gotten Function of Beauty a couple times and I've changed the goals that I pick each time and I definitely notice a difference between which ones that I pick and which ones that I don't. Also what came with Function of Beauty was the hair mask. Last time I got the leave-in conditioner. Both the leave-in conditioner and the hair mask are customized as well so whatever you put for your uh, shampoo and conditioner, it will be applied to the hair mask or hair treatments. I think it can really help rejuvenate your hair if your hair is feeling a little bit dull. Does that make sense? If your hair is feeling a little bit down, a little bit dull, a little bit dry, I feel like this hair mask can really help rejuvenate your hair to make it a little bit more alive. The hair mask helps nourish dry or damaged lackluster hair, so I think it's definitely worth a try. Make sure you use my link to get 20% off your customized Function to Beauty shampoo and conditioner. Here is where Function to Beauty is available. I'll have a link in the description box or you can just copy the link right here. So make sure you guys go check out Function to Beauty is customized shampoo and conditioner that is also vegan and cruelty free. So make sure you guys go check it out. Thank you Function Beauty for sponsoring today's video. What do you get when you fall in love? The soundtrack for this movie, Mwah. like a masterpiece. It, sell, it tells a story within itself, the soundtrack, which is the point, right? Rock, like bollock with an earth. The incorporation of things that they shared throughout their lives is amazing. Pointing to the globe, the dreams. 
It is just, oh, it literally makes me want to scream. It makes me want to throw up how cute it is because it works so well. It doesn't come off as cheesy and I love that. It doesn't come off as cheesy, but it, they are the like, sweetest things ever. This speech fucking ruined me. That dress ruined me too. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and this has got to be one of the happiest days of my life. The way he looks at her. I'm literally... <laughs> I love a long, drawn-out love story. Over 12 years, are you kidding me? Like, imagine if they didn't make it weird and they actually got together and we got to see their lives from... They would've been high school sweethearts. Do you still consider them high school sweethearts if they weren't together in high school, but they were in love with each other in high school? Do you consider that high school sweethearts? Because it's like you were in love with them, but you just weren't technically together. But you've known... They've been with each other their whole entire lives. Give me a break. They're just the best. Bethany Williams has just got a part-time job there. Yeah, right. What? Bethany Williams. Mm -hmm. Forget it, even I want to sleep with her. Imagine. Information. Sorry. <laughs> the movie takes a different turn. She actually gets together with Bethany instead of him. That could have been something epic. I think I should just become a writer just to turn heterosexual iconic love stories into lesbian love stories. I feel like I can do it so easily. Just look at Greg right now. What a bimbo. Seriously, what though? He invited me to the school dance. The movie that made clarification on communication so important because basically this whole thing of why it lasted for so long was because they didn't communicate properly. The whole movie over if they just didn't get asked by other people. It means that much to you. Just, just kiss already. The fact that they didn't lose their virginity to each other honestly means nothing. Virginity is a construct, and it's, it me, it's. Why do we put so much value in? to our virginity. Why did I just do that? I literally just did that without even thinking. That I was like, why didn't they lose their virginity to each other when it does, it gets literally like, what is wrong with me? I'm like- Boobs are natural or pushed up. I mean, it, it depends. Is, is it for dancing or is it, or is it um... Who knows? Shit, I'll fall in love with Lily Collins right now. Oh, I'm already in love with Lily Collins. Like, what do you mean? Aren't we all? Hey, gorgeous. Like, they have dates and they didn't even ride together with their dates. Just seems like their dates should already know that they're not the ones. You have to ride together at least to the dance. The condom came off inside my vagina and at present I'm unable to locate it. That's way more information than I needed. Is it more information? That's like the just the right amount of information. She didn't give you unnecessary details of their night together. She gave you the straight facts to tell you what the panic was for. I think she did a great job, you know? Is it um, front, bottom, or back? What do you think I am? Front, bottom, or back? Wouldn't it just be like, Front or back? Like, what? Stop. My dad wants me to try for a scholarship at Harvard. Boston College happens to have a really great hotel management course. It is what you want to do, isn't it? If you organize moving out of the country and finding places for both you and your best friend, that's a different type of care. Like not only considering like you and what you're gonna pursue, but also like your best friend. Like that is a different level of care. That is like soulmate type shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like soulmate, absolute soulmate, period, done. Like I'm over it, like move on, you're in love. You should have known that right from that sentence right there. It's like I got my heart broken as many times as they did in this movie while watching it. You're kidding me kidding me oh it hurts Whew. 
it is painful to watch i will tell you that this is i don't feel much pain watching movies but this is another type of hurt right there see you in two weeks <laughs> he's like what the fuck is your issue we're seeing each other in two weeks and she's like i'm never gonna see you again they show this long shot and they have a parallel to that the next time oh there's like I can't express my love for this movie because it just, it gets better and better each time you watch it. So this is what I'm talking about. Making your audience care for your characters and their life is a major key role in storytelling and some movies just don't get that right <laughs> the notebook jesus christ i could care less about those old people this is what i'm talking about this is what i'm fucking talking about turn it up turn it up because it is so amazing what are you, what are you doing here just just back for the weekend thought i'd surprise you great um yeah let's, let's go for a coffee then. no 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 oh, let's stay here why don't you put the kettle on why does that sound so threatening put the kettle on bitch not a bitch, not at all. All I can think about is poo. How much, when, what color? I hope you mean hers. And he's holding the bear right there and then he holds the bear again later. It's just, I can't, the movie will it just gets better and better every single time you watch it no matter what year you're in no matter what part of your life you're in it's gonna get better every single time you watch it it's like the little things in this movie just like make it all that more emotional like what are you talking about like this is literally the perfect romantic movie i've ever seen it is cheesy in all the right ways it is funny in all the right ways, and it is romantic and emotional in all the right ways. You're fucking kidding me. It pings emotion in me the same way I would think like a Pixar film does. Their use of music and the same music. That's like a, I think a common thing throughout emotional movies or movies that want to strike a sadness within you. They use kind of this, a same score, same like instrumental that was played at a happy time and they use it slow down and like a sad time and it makes you just like want to cry and I just like, I love that so much. Like, oh my God. It's so good, this scene, I love it. <laughs> makes me so happy. This movie makes me so happy and hurt and sad and makes me so happy. You're looking way too hot right now. <laughs> give me, give me one reason why I should not die for them. You couldn't, you couldn't, you literally couldn't because they are just perfect. <sighs> it hurts. We should go. Literally every time. This is the one time I will accept cheating is okay. <laughs> cheating is not okay, but in this scenario, these two people could commit murder together and I'd be like, it is fine. <laughs> I wanted to see you, for Christ's sake, you're my best friend. Or maybe you needed someone from your old life to point out the truth. Me, I I'm in a mess. And you're in denial. You're projecting. Okay, can we just stop the psycho babble here and just... Talk like English people, please. Fine, fine. Why do I know this? Seeing where we live, you know, our apartment, our, our lifestyle. Oh, it's, you, it's... you thought I was jealous of you. No, all I see is someone compensating for a crap personal life by schmoozing his way up the career ladder. Crap, crap personal life. Stable relationship with beautiful girlfriend, lots in common, a great circle of friends, a kid on the way who's going to have two parents, by the way, not one. Prime example of why men are trashed out right there. That one line right there. I spit on you. Just don't come whinging to me when you realize that you're empty inside. No danger of that. Good. Excellent. Fantastic. Why is that the first thing men want to do when they are angry is to punch something? Talk about other people's emotional issues and talk about women's emotional issues when your first response to any emotionally overwhelming situation is to punch something. 
I don't think that's very stable in my mind, but fuck it, like whatever. Like the pink, the pink. You see how prominent pink is in this movie? Appreciate it. Appreciate it because it is a wonderful thing throughout the movie. I love a movie with a color scheme and I feel like this subtle way of incorporating pink and reds into the movie is wonderful. It's like this tint throughout the entire movie. It's in a lot of the props and the lighting. It's not overwhelming to where it's just like, this is a pink movie. But there's little aspects of pink, like right there behind her, there's an aspect of pink and it works really well throughout the movie. Don't you love it when like, there's like a scene of white people like and something like weird or like funny happens and they're just like this. Like they don't say anything, they just go. Like that's amazing. Lily Allen's presence in this movie, in the soundtrack, amazing. Honestly, fuck Alex though. He didn't show up to her wedding. Like, I get it's hard for him, but she showed up to his. But honest, well, she went to his because she was gonna win him back. <laughs> Look at that pink aesthetic they have in the film. Like the buttons, like it's obviously like a pink themed hotel, but like, it looks so good. Here it is, bridal suite for two, checked in two hours ago. You gotta be, like, this is it. This is it. Like, this is it. Lily Allen's Fuck You playing in the background. Her strolling up. This song is what, like, the perfect angry song. great and then her finding the letter like it all is just like ugh. like I feel like in a lot of ways this movie has a lot of parts where you're really sad and you're like it's not working out there's miscommunication they're not together it's unsatisfying and then there's so many parts where it, it just is satisfying and you're like this is it this is the movie this is like you can't compete where you don't compare this movie is the best twice I've let you slip through my fingers and stop being afraid and take the chance I know now I can make you happy. Call me if you feel the same way. I will literally die on the hill saying that this is 100% better than The Notebook. Like, I can debate you on it for hours. Like, you can't win. The Notebook will never win compared to this, I'm sorry. Like, structurally, it is just a better movie. Cohes it's a cohesive movie. And that is what makes it so much better. The characters are built very well. The story is built very well. And it just all works together. What are you doing there? I live here now. I moved in. I hacked his computer. Oh, we're getting married. <laughs> you, Rosie, you told me to come here. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. Thank you. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I do quite hate it. No, 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 no. Hurt. Like it, 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 it's just different. It's just, I can't like, ow. This speech, I will literally jump out of my window. I can't explain how this speech I can't even put it into words. Like you just have to listen to it and like appreciate it for what it is because it is absolutely amazing. Whoever wrote this speech, I, that is, it's, it's a lot to handle. Until you wake up one morning and realize years have gone by. We both know about that one, Alex. What is that girl making a stank face in the background? She literally looks like this. Because I've realized that no matter where you are, or what you're doing, or who you're with, I will always, honestly, truly, completely love you. Like, like, a, like a sister loves a, sister a brother. Loves a brother. 
friend. A friend. Mom's a friend. Fucking, are you kidding me? Imagine having the balls to give a speech like that as a wedding. Like, I can't. Like, her finally telling him that she loves him, but incorporating it into a wedding speech after he just got fucking married. Pink, pink, pink. Amazing. This, this film has this pink and yellow theme to it, which I love. It's there and it's prominent. And once you notice it, you can't not notice it anymore, you feel? Now he's gonna make it his life's mission to go out there and meet the most perfect, beautiful girl in the world just to try and get over you. She won't be you. You guys need to just start talking to each other. Like I, giving speeches to other people, just fucking talk to each other, like. I only realized um, tonight that you forgot. That's why you took Bethany to the dance. You went with Greg. And the song comes back. And here we are, feeling things, having emotions. Look at that side eye. Your mans is not your mans anymore. He was never your mans, you know what I mean? So your wife. Won't be joining me. We both knew it wasn't right. I'm not gonna cry, you know? And you were you. This is so goddamn fucking beautiful. And I took you in my arms. This is beautiful. This is like heaven. Twelve years, twelve years later. I just thank you. The amount of joy this film brings me is outstanding. It's like, I can't, like, this is so beautiful. This is such a beautiful scene. I love them so much. I love this movie so much. I love these characters so much. It makes, like, I care for them so much. So, 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 like, you want to say so, like, like, this is how you do a romantic movie. I literally cannot praise this film enough because it's like, I've never watched a romantic movie that genuinely made me care for the characters this much. In ways you can make your characters have a lot of depth and have these, you know, negative character flaws and positive character aspects. And I understand doing that, but you still need to make your characters have flaws and have these different aspects to them while also making them someone that the audience cares about that will forgive their flaws and will forgive their mistakes in a way. When you write characters and they don't have depth, you don't care about them and therefore you don't care about the story. This movie flows so well with the time jumps. They're not abrupt. They make sense. It's not too often to where you're like, oh, we're moving on so quick and it's just like happening over and over again. You're not getting too many updates about the time, but it's there and you're aware of it and you're aware that you're kind of switching over into another year or five years like it says it but it's not too in your face which i think sometimes time gap movies can be too heavy on the time gaps and the time placement it is too too aware so you're kind of jumping a lot i also think that the coloring i talk about the color like the entire movie but i think the coloring is like a huge aspect of why i love this movie so much i mean as you can see i do love color in films but i think this film does a really good job at giving that strong color palette in the film without it being too on the dot adding specific props or certain like things throughout the movie or certain lightings or natural lightings throughout it to kind of have this pink undertone and have that kind of pinky vibe to it without it being too overwhelming while also bringing in um, a nice complimenting color of yellow i think is a really nice visually pleasing look to the film which is something that I haven't appreciated until now that I watched it. I really was taking notice of the colors throughout the film. I think Lily Collins and Sam Claflin, Claflin did an amazing job on these characters. I think that whoever casted them did an amazing job. They had such good chemistry. Uh, this movie is a romantic, this movie is a romantic comedy. And although it is a romantic comedy, it is not too cliche. I know we all love cliches and romantic comedies, but I feel like these, this movie incorporates romantic comedy cliches with also, which, and also making it very unique in how they do it. I think a long period of time, like a, like a, a love story that takes over the course, a love story that takes course over 
like over 10 years is a really tricky thing to do. It's a common thing throughout romantic movies. We've seen it a lot. This movie I think does it in a very entertaining way that is not boring. A lot of the times you watch really long romantic movies that take course over 10 plus years. It is boring and sometimes they just give you unnecessary and sometimes they write in unnecessary things about their time spent over the years and it doesn't come back into play. It's just a random thing that they add. I think a lot of the things they added into the movie come back to play later that do have a significant role that do have a significant role in the film. Foreshadowing is really good in this film. I love foreshadowing. I don't like it when foreshadowing is too on the dot. Uh, I think foreshadowing should be foreshadowing. I think it should be a little bit more subtle rather than in your face. I think foreshadowing shouldn't be necessarily noticed on the first time you watch it. I think it should be something that you can kind of pick up on after a few watches. Uh, and obviously I've watched this film a lot of times. Have I noticed everything about it? No. But I do really love this movie for a lot of different reasons. By no means is this me saying that I am a film critic or I, I don't study film. I don't know much about film and the technical aspects of um, reviewing it. But when I do like a film, I do like explaining why I like it. You know, I think you don't have to be a film major and you don't have to study film to explain the reasons about why you like a film. I feel like Love, Rosie is a very charming film in ways that it just makes you care about characters, it makes you care about the story, it makes you interested in what's going to happen, and it does it very beautifully, very visually pleasing. I love it. I can't find that many flaws about it. So that was my commentary on Love, Rosie. I hope you guys like this video and I hope you guys like this movie as well because I love it so much. If you don't, that's okay. Let me know your thoughts on Love, Rosie in the comment section down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TCallLevel on Instagram and at LevelTrin on Twitter. Subscribe so you can see more videos from me and turn on the notifications bell as well if you want to be notified every single time I post a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!